Hello, I'm David Price. I'm from the University of Aberdeen in Scotland and the Observation and Pragmatic Research Institute in Singapore. And I'm here to talk to you about the importance of bloody eosinophils in severe asthma. And so we've known for a long time that sputum eosinophilia was often associated with more severe asthma. But little was known about bloody eosinophils. And so we've actually been able to look um, in large cohorts now, over 100,000 patients, at the relationship between bloody eosinophil counts and asthma control. And what we see is a strong relationship right the way through the scale between asthma control, exacerbations, um, and the level of bloody eosinophils. And probably the optimal cut point for saying we have worse control is somewhere between 300 and 400 in the absolute counts. It is, however, important to understand that this does not apply to all patients. The majority of patients will actually have a normal eosinophil count. And it's probably about 15 to 20% of patients that will actually have a raised count. So for those patients, it is obviously very important as one of the predictors of risk, and also in the future for predicting response to certain biologic drugs. But we also need to be cognizant of the majority of patients who actually have normal blood eosinophils. And yes, they are lower risk, but actually because they're a bigger population, will also contain more of the patients with uncontrolled asthma. So the eosinophil count is not a panacea, but does seem to be predictive of a group of patients who need to, one, make sure we've got adequate inhaled steroids on board, and two, potentially the use of biologic agents um, for the more severe patients.